Okay, so Windows 10 will reach its end of life this year. That means it won't get any more security updates. And that means that if you're doing things like online banking or any online shopping, there is a danger that uh, you could have your personal information stolen. So it is best to move away from Windows 10. Now, of course, you have a variety of different options in front of you. One of those options is to migrate over to Linux. Now, on this channel, I've got several different videos about how you can pick a Linux distribution. I try to do one kind of, you know, every year. So you kind of know what's good, what's out there, what's available. However, there is one Linux distribution which I haven't covered in those other videos because it's specifically aimed at people who want to migrate from Windows over to Linux with the least path of resistance. And that's called Zorin OS. So in this video, I want to talk about how you can install Zorin OS. I want to show you the installation process and then give you a quick tour of the desktop so you can decide whether trying out that path, going down that way, is something you want to do. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, now before you start, you're going to need a couple of things. One is you're going to need a PC that you want to try this on. Now, if you're just trying it, then maybe that should be a spare PC, one you've kind of bought second hand. You can try it in a virtual machine if you want to. And you can try it on your main PC, just booting off the USB drive. And we'll talk more about the USB drive in a second. Uh, and then trying it without installing it. So it just leaves your system perfectly as it is. Please be aware, and I will repeat this later, if you do install it, it will overwrite what you already have on your PC. Now, I mentioned a USB drive. You need a USB drive. And what you need to do is download the ISO file from the Zorin OS website. Then you need to use a program like uh, Etcher. And there are full instructions on the Zorin uh, website on how you do this. And you basically prepare the USB drive with the operating system on it. And to do that, you basically say, here's the ISO file that I want to use. Here's the USB drive that I want to do. Go. And the program will do it all for you. Once that's done, you've got a USB drive, which you can then plug into your PC and you need to reboot your PC and make sure it boots off that USB drive rather than booting off the internal uh, storage. And sometimes on many PCs, there's a button you can press it on the keyboard, uh, F12, for example, that might bring up a boot menu that allows you to pick to boot off the USB drive if you're having a struggle with that. And then you'll be able to boot up into Zorin OS. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So a PC, virtual machine, or your own PC, but being careful what you're doing there. USB drive, which you've prepared, boot it up, and then let's see what you get. Okay, so once you boot up from your USB drive, you're going to get a menu uh, that allows you to install or try. We'll see about that in a minute. Or Zorin OS, or there's some other settings, or just powering off. Of course, we just go with that first option, and we want to go ahead and boot it up. And this will boot it up into a live distribution, which you then will be able to play around or run the installer. Let's just let it finish booting. OK, so it's booted up and you now have the option to try Zorin OS or install it. What we're going to do is just go to try just to show you what that means. So trying it means that you're running from the USB drive itself and you've got full access to the entire operating system. So, you know, we can go up here to the menu. We can start a text editor. You know, nothing particularly interesting. And we can start typing. This is a text editor okay so obviously you could do lots and lots of interesting things you can play around with it and see what you think uh, close without saving thank you very much you can just fiddle with all the different aspects get yourself familiar and if you say yes i would like this running on this computer then you can go over here and you can run the install zorin os which will actually be the same as if you clicked it on that initial menu that we saw a moment ago. Now, before we go on, it is important to remember that when you're installing an operating system, there is the potential that you're going to lose all the data on the drive. In fact, the default configuration will be to completely delete the drive. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing, that you're doing this either in a virtual machine or a spare PC or on a machine where you're installing it to a different disk drive. But you need to be very careful. Always make sure you have a backup of your data just in case things do go wrong. So the first option we have is to pick the keyboard. I'm just going to stick with the defaults. And then we say, what do you want to do? Do you want to download the updates? Yes, I do. Do you want to install third party software for things like the graphics driver? Uh, yes, I do. And I don't want to send any data across. Click on continue. 
Okay, and as I was saying, look, erase this. Warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and any other files. Now, I can do this on this machine because there is nothing on here and I want to install a fresh install of Zorin on here. You need to be very careful, but if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and click install now. It will just ask you one more time. These are the changes I'm gonna make. I'm gonna delete this hard drive. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Now I need to set my uh, time zone. And now I need to type in who I am to create my uh, machine. So I'm gonna call this just Zorin and then my uh, username and password that I want to use and then click on continue. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to install, let's just go through some of the highlights of Zorin OS. I have taken these unashamedly from the Zorin OS website. So Zorin OS is an alternative to Windows and Mac OS designed to make your computer faster, more powerful, secure, and privacy respecting. Sounds good, doesn't it? And it's designed to be easy. And this is actually the main thing about Zorin OS. They really have tried to make it easy for people who come from a Windows or Mac OS background to feel at home, to remove the barrier so that they can get into using a Linux distribution without kind of too much headache, without too much of a learning curve. That's really what this distro is aiming to do. Now, as I said, it is a Linux distro and it's built on the foundations of Ubuntu and Debian. And uh, the Zorin project believes in privacy as a fundamental human right. That's why Zorin OS doesn't collect personal data. So that may be something a lot of you who've been worried about that on, let's say, Windows and so on, would be happy. So advertisers and governments can't spy on your activity. It, of course, is open uh, source, so anyone can audit its source code and verify those privacy claims. You can install Zorin OS alongside Windows or Mac OS to keep your files and apps. So that's what's called dual booting. And you're able to choose which OS to use at boot up. I'm not covering that in this video. That is a bit more of an advanced topic. However, it is possible. And uh, you can run Windows apps, some Windows apps on Zorin OS because it has Windows app support built in. That basically means using the Wine project, which is basically a Windows uh, emulation layer. Uh, and so that is built in by default. You can just run that. And if you double click on an exe file, it will realize it's a Windows exe file and then try to configure it through that emulation support. You can also install native Linux and Windows games from Steam, for example, Lutris and other sources. Zorin OS comes with NVIDIA, AMD and Intel graphics drivers, as well as game optimizations. So you can get great performance. Now, of course, uh, gaming on Linux is a lot easier nowadays since we've got Steam OS that really has opened up the way. And Zorin kind of uses some of those fundamentals to get uh, gaming running on uh, Linux. And the final thing to say is that your documents, music, photos and videos will work on Zorin OS because you've got access to things like LibreOffice, which, of course, can edit and view uh, Microsoft Office, Microsoft uh, 365 documents. And if you do do the dual boot, then you can still access the files that are on your Windows partition, assuming it's not encrypted, uh, uh, while you're inside of Zorin OS. Okay, so the installation has completed. We could click continue testing just to remain in that live desktop booted from your USB, or we can reboot now to actually the proper installed version on your uh, SSD. Okay, and once that's rebooted, we have to log in. So of course we use the account that we created during the setup process. And we have a welcome screen. So let's go through the tour to see what it shows us. So to open the menu to launch apps, well, we know that that's down there like that. That's fair enough. So we can choose the look and feel of the desktop. So we go to the Zorin appearance uh, menu and we can set here different types of style, uh, very much looking like, you know, kind of different operating systems. Uh, I pretty much like, I think the, uh, the default one, you can upgrade to Zorin Pro and you get a whole bunch uh, more of those uh, desktops there. I'll stick with the default. Okay, you can also connect your online accounts. You can sync up with Google and so on. Won't do that now. We can also link up to our mobile phones. I won't do that now. And then there is the software 
uh, center which allows us to install software. So let's just go there now because I wanted to cover that. You can also access that by going down here to the start menu and then clicking on software there. So here is basically the store and you can pick different things that you want to install. Now, for example, if I wanted to install Thonny, that is the absolutely brilliant um, Python IDE uh, that also supports things like the um, Raspberry Pi uh, Pico. So if I click on that here, now the thing I just wanted us to note is that uh, Zorin support two types of install, flat pack or the more traditional uh, package from the repository. And what I wanted to show is that they're not always running the same version. So we've clicked on the repository where if you scroll down here, we can see it's version 3.3.14, okay? Now, if you scroll up a bit and go to the Flatpak version, okay, then you can see it's version 4.1.7. So there's a huge difference in uh, version numbers depending on whether you're using the Flatpak version or the uh, package version. I'm going to go ahead and install the Flatpak there and uh, we'll run that once it's installed. Now, while that's installing, let's go back to our tour. So there you go. That's it. Hope you enjoy. So we can close that now and we can uh, wait for our package to install. While we're waiting for that again, it also a pop-up came up telling me that there are packages that need to be updated. So this is the same as what you get in Windows or in, uh, in Mac OS. They fix things and they can be updated. At the moment, I'm just gonna say, remind me later. It really is a case of just in clicking installing now. It will go away, download them and install them. Updating, just the same as you would even on your smartphone. So we worry, that's not something to worry about. That's a good thing, pretty easy. Uh, and I'll, I've just uh, delayed that till later. Okay, so that's now installed. Now you could just click open here from the software center or you go down here. Of course, we can search for things as well. We don't know what menu it's in. Thonny, let's go ahead and launch that. And we'll just show this running. It's just a simple pro, uh, Python program. Hello world, if I can type. And then of course you can just hit run here and it'll come up down there, hello world. We won't go into Python now, I've got other videos covering that here on this channel. Now, one other interesting thing to mention is that the default browser now is Brave. Now, according to the Zorin website, in light of Mozilla's recent policy changes, the Zorin team no longer felt that Firefox aligned with their commitment to privacy. So therefore, they've opted to make uh, Brave the default browser for Zorin 17.3 uh, and onwards. Okay, privacy by default, that is the uh, the way they are announcing themselves. Now, if you go over to the software center that we were in uh, previously, okay, we can notice here that if we can search for Chrome, uh, so Chrome is available to download and run, uh, as is Firefox, if you actually did want to install Firefox, you're not, you know, your, your options aren't limited, your options aren't being taken away. However, the default one is Brave. If you don't like that, go and install one of the other ones. Now, of course, that's it. There's lots that, of course, we could go through all the different menus, go through all the different things you can do uh, in the settings. This, of course, is a fully functional desktop operating system. Lots of things you can uh, play around with and change. However, as you can see, browsing, files, uh, an office suite, programming, uh, it's all there for you just to dive in and start using it. Okay, so there you have it, there is Zorin OS. Uh, do let me know in the comments below, will you be migrating from Windows 10 to Linux? If not Zorin OS, what is the Linux distribution you are using? My name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>